Wrapping up Orhan Genshibe here. Um, so we've seen the movie Everything is Darkness. Uh, it's there. We had that back and forth between East and West, country and city, Islam and secularism. Of course, the East in, in, in Turkey, uh, you go farther East, you get into the countryside, you go farther West, you get to Istanbul. Um, you go East, you get, uh, you know, Arabs, you get Islam, you go West, you have Europeans and Christianity. Uh, and and really secularism more. Um, you go east, uh, <clears throat> right? So east you get Eastern culture and uh, sort of the alternative modernity of the east, and west you get the the, the uh, typical modernity of Western Europe and and technology and all that. So uh, you can see female versus male, uh, east versus west, Islam versus secularism. Uh, these are all reproduced here. Uh, in uh in in the film uh as well as uh you know the the, the sort of the, the lyrics genshibe and the intellectuals uh there's political co-optation of arabesque by social conservatives uh and uh, uh continued attempts by leftists to co-op genshibe's form of arabesque because genshibe is um uh, something of a, a liberal um he's like willie nelson or johnny cash he's a liberal but he plays country music and so he Kind of tries to bring people together because he can understand uh, where his fans are coming from, uh, but he, you know, he he's he's more um, um, uh, sympathetic uh, to uh, the liberals. Um, an affectionate modernism. Uh, Genshin Bay distances his music from arabesque. He uh, when he's in an interview, he's like, well, no, I you know I don't really do an arabesque. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a I'm an artist. Uh, I don't do this pop stuff. Uh, but at the same time, uh, he challenges TRT, that's Turkish Radio and Television, the, the state-owned uh, uh, behemoth that controls everything up until the 1990s. Um, he challenges TRT's role in maintaining the cultural purity of Turkish music. He's much more of a populist. He says, look, you know, we got to uh, rely on the people and not on the state. Uh, he does challenge the stereotyping of arabesque, uh, you know, right after he says, I don't do arabesque. And then he says, look, it's not all corruption sprawl and backwardness uh when we you know when we look at arabesque music it's the uh it's the you know the, the people that you know he's trying to speak to their humanity coming through and not just their um their their bad taste uh and uh religious uh fanaticism um he's arguing for uh indigenous humanism remember uh the uh the um, um globalization from below or or sort of modernity from below uh, alternative modernities. He's looking for an indigenous um, humanism, you know, that, that even though they are uh, Turks and even though they are um, listening to this Arab sounding music and even though they are very, very devout uh, religious people, uh, they still have uh, some sort of uh, general love for humanity uh, that shines through. In other words, he is arguing that Arabesque offers an alternative modernity that Turks can feel as part of them. Uh, their own modernity, uh, but is still uh, valid uh, in, in, uh, around the world, um, a modernity that is cosmopolitan, uh, but at the same time unique to uh, to Turkish identity. Uh, when he talks about love and politics, uh, this is back to the theme of uh, the Republic of Love here, Genchebe's efforts to appear, to appear quote-unquote, non-political uh, push him inexorably in the direction of politics. In declaring love to be a superior way of making people do things, in comparison with the force of arms, which is the state taking over, up until the 90s, the state was taking over all the time. Um, and so he's clearly stating his opposition to this right-left polarization of the country and to the looming threat of military coup, uh, which when it came was actually a failed coup. It came after um, uh, uh, this book was, was published. Uh, but everyone was expecting it, and it, I, honestly, I expected they would be successful and that um, the, the current president would be dead by now. But uh, he prevailed and uh, purged the army and purged the universities, and it's really a, 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 a bloody mess right now in Turkey and has been uh, for several years. Sliding toward fascism and uh, Islamic kind of uh, uh, fascism too. Despite despite the uh, Islamo-fascism as being a, a total myth, uh, what they've got in Turkey is uh, something pretty close to it. Okay, uh, uh, and and of course he's 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 backed by the U.S. Right, that the U.S. Uh, is is uh, is a strong ally of uh, of our of our friend in in uh, in Ankara now. 
Uh, so why cry? Uh, says an Aksu's diva citizenship. Uh, so now we're going on to says an Aksu. Um, her early career, she comes from a middle class family. She dropped out of college and, and decided to go uh, make her, her, her mark in pop music. Um, she had her first success in Anatolian pop in the 1970s. It was much more low class, commercial, cosmopolitan, etc. Um, then we have the 1980 coup by the military, uh, followed by a police state and disappearances, and all of a sudden, Sezen Aksu uh, uh, explodes. Uh, three albums from that time that show a new professionalism and a new focus on marketing to middle class audiences. Not, uh, you know, this is this is not uh, 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 mass pop culture. This is this is much more thoughtful, artful, and 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 stylish. Um, Light from the East, uh, ex Oriente Lux. Um, we have or overt feminism, uh, but a delicate balance between celebrating Turkish motherhood and provoking a new Turkish working mom. So Light from the East, uh, uh, Mosaicistan, or what mosaic you bastard? Uh, this was the uh, the interviewer, uh, the the, inter the the guy on the on the the um, <clears throat> on the show. Uh, let's see. I had the page turned down, but I've lost it now. Oh, wait a second. I'm in the wrong section. Oh, my. <clears throat> okay, here's the story. Uh, Al Parslan Turkish, the founder of the fascistic Milietchi Hareket Partisi, was, the story goes, dozing. Uh, during a live debate on Mehmet Ali Biran's, this is from page 131, uh, uh, Chapra's Atesh, a television program that very year. Um, oh, what year is it? Sometime in the 1980s. Um, he woke up to hear someone describing Turkey as a mosaic. Now, mosaic uh, is going to be sort of a multicultural idea. Uh, this is going to say, oh, the Kurds are okay. They're not really that bad. Uh, you know, we should we should be okay with Arabs. We should be okay with Europeans. It's all cool. Uh, he wakes up and he says, uh, he woke up to hear someone describing Turkey as a mosaic. His response, a snarling, what mosaic, you bastard? Ne mojaiji, mojai ulan, initiated a broad public debate about the appropriateness of this metaphor. So, uh, when she releases her um, her album, let me see uh, if I can if I can quickly hunt it up. It's pretty cool. Um, uh, Ex Oriente Lux, um, the album here, <clears throat> the album cover you can see is is a big mosaic, uh, sort of uh, just a. Um, uh, kicking sand in the face of the of the uh, of the the Turkish nationalists, uh, and 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 sort of holding it holding it over uh, them, they're they're um, really kind of a, a sort of a, a racism uh, against non uh, Turks. In any case, um, so she's celebrating Turkish multiculturalism, uh, which is middle class identity politics. It's opposed to uh, to sort of the uh, the the state. Uh, uh, singularity that, that had been there. Uh, so uh, she illustrates and defends a trend. She's going away from uh, the state as the protector of national identity and toward private capital as the protector of national identity. The TRT and by extension the state itself was no longer meeting its responsibilities as the guardian of national culture, which she claimed now fell to the private citizen and to the market. Uh, light from the East, Asnatolian Cosmopolites. Uh, let's listen to the the sound here and see, you know, how uh, how does this sound? We've got the lyrics. Let me make this big, and then I have to go to the top left corner in case it's not really as big as it says it is. And we've got the lyrics here in front of the camera. Why cry, my beloved, with the dark side locks? This too shall pass, don't cry. My cry reached the skies. This too shall pass, don't cry. There are thorns around the rose, again with the thorns in the rose, and the nightingale. <laughs> so you can see it's, it's upper class sort of uh, art music here. There are thorns around the rose, 
thorns. The nightingale cries out because of the rose with an ah. Whatever happens with winter's end, come spring, this too shall pass, don't cry. I am Diane, not everyone attains a secret. Ayup went to Egypt uh, patiently. I became like a sheep, I wept by and by. This too shall pass, don't cry. This seems like a, a little bit of, of Arabic in there, a little bit of uh, sort of mention of Egypt, so maybe some religious uh, sort of nostalgia, uh, a very vague um, religious nostalgia coming there. And you can, you know, you can see this sort of uh, um, um, liberalism coming in here uh, as opposed to the state uh, controlling everything. So we'll listen to that. Uh, we can listen to it now. We've got it called up here uh, somewhere. There we go. Okay, let's stop it there.